chapter 37, verses 1 through 5. It says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. And the reading of God's word is blessed on this morning. Remember, saints of God, to trust in the Lord. Amen and amen. He turned it. Hallelujah. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it. Hallelujah. He turned it. He turned my mourning into dancing. He turned my crying into laughing. Hallelujah. And it was no Nobody but God. Only God could turn it. Only God could fix it. Only God can set me on the path called straight. Hallelujah. He turned my mourning into dancing. He turned it. How many of you can say right now with me, he turned it? The devil meant it for my evil. The devil meant it for my downfall. The devil meant it to destroy me. But thank God for Jesus. Thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. He will turn it. He can turn it. Hallelujah. I tell you to say with me right now, only God. 
Only God, only God can do it. Only God can turn it around. Only God can save. Only God can deliver. Only God can set free. He turned it. Hallelujah. We thank God for the vessels dancing, going back into the archives and getting that, that video. He turned it, which is which is very fitting for today. Because let me tell you something, saints of God. He is the God of the turnaround. He is the God of the turnaround. Right where you are today, what you are experiencing, what you are going through, I dare you to say with me, he is the God. He is the God of the turnaround. We certainly thank God for that selection coming through the vessels of Praise on this morning. Praise God. We want to get ready now to hear from heaven. Today, the fourth Sunday in every month is Missionary Sunday here at the Agape Church. And we thank God for having wonderful women of God, amen, who live the life and, and who are supportive of the ministry. Our speaker this morning is Evangelist Tanetta Randall. Tana Evangelist Tanetta Randall, she loves the Lord, a young woman that loves the Lord, loves her church, loves her pastor, loves her husband, and loves her family. Amen. We thank God for this prayer warrior. I tell you, I tell you, she can get a prayer through for you. She is also over our prayer ministry at church, Evangelist Randall, and every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning at 6 a.m., amen. We have a prayer call and you are, you are free to join us on our prayer call, which will be posted in, on our church's Facebook page every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning, just for 15 minutes. Start your day off with prayer. But Evangelist Randall is going to come and share the word of the Lord with us. But before she shall come, we will have another selection from the Voices of Deliverance, after which the word of the Lord Evangelist Tanetta Randall. Hallelujah, we came to give God thanks for today, just for being who he is. The song says, the weak shall be made strong, and they shall fall to their knees and worship him. Because we owe God thanks and glory, just for who he is to us. And we shall forever give his name praise. Thank you, Jesus.
thank God for another day that he has made, another day that we can rejoice and be glad because he is God. And we certainly give him thanks for what he has done and what he continues to do. So we just bless the Lord on this day. We honor him. We give him glory, honor, and praise. I am not going to do a prayer because Evangelist Nelson has done such a wonderful, awesome prayer. But I tell you, God is good. God is so good. He is so, so good. And he is certainly worthy to be praised. We give all honor. We give all glory to our father who sits on high, who looks down low and who continues to manifest his glory, to manifest his power, his love, his faithfulness, his mercies are new to us this morning. So we certainly thank him. We thank him because of those mercies. We know that we have not been consumed, nothing that we've done on our own, but only because he is God and he is faithful to his people. We certainly thank our pastor this morning for allowing us to come before her people, to allow us to use her pulpit, so to speak, to minister the word of God to her people. We bless her. We honor her. We celebrate her on this day. She is a wonder. She is an anointed woman of God who leads God's people faithfully, continue to give God's people his word, the truth of his word, not tickling our ears, but leading us on that path to righteousness. So we certainly honor our leader on this morning, and we bless our assistant leader as well as he continues to teach God's people that anointed word, giving God's people the truth of his word. And I'm going to mimic off of our assistant, Pastor if I can this morning and say, I will not be before you long, but I know that there is a word from God because God has truly been amazing to me. I tell you, it started on yesterday and I'm yet feasting. I'm yet feasting on what God has said to me. Even on yesterday, he is faithful, y'all. He is faithful to perform. So if you will, if you will go with me this morning, I will be coming from the book of Proverbs. Be coming from just one familiar verse, Proverbs 18, verse 10. And the reading of God's word is, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. I will read it one more time because it's just one verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. If I could but pull a subject this morning from that particular verse, I will just say, strong name. One of the greatest defenses that we have in this world to help us fight against the devices of Satan is the name of the Lord. Once we begin to gain an understanding of this important aspect of the Christian life, we will then begin to grasp the absolute security that we have in him. In Proverbs 18 and 10, we read of this security. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The writer of all but two chapters of the book of Proverbs was King Solomon. Solomon would have firsthand knowledge concerning the trust in case within our aforementioned verse. He ascended to the throne following the death of his father, King David who was a very strong influence in Solomon's life. When looking back at David's early life, we see that it serves as some ample proof of the trust he had in his name. As a young man standing face to face against the Philistine giant Goliath, he was able to boldly declare in 1 Samuel 17 and 45, you come to me with the sword, with the spear and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. We see that even as an adolescent, David possessed a firm hold and belief in the power of his name that would not only impact himself and the lives of those around him, but also have an even further reach and effect in the lives of those who would follow. Concerning the name of the Lord, we read that David not only praised his name in Psalm 7 and 17, he says, I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praises to the name of the Lord most high. David also called upon his name in Psalms 116 and 17. He says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. He proclaimed the excellence of his name in Psalm 8 and 1, where David says, O Lord, 
how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We also know in Psalms 20 and 1, he writes these words. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. It is this last statement made by David about the name of the God of Jacob defending you. That is probably a direct correlation to his victory over Goliath and may have also served as the impetus behind Solomon's own words about the name of the Lord being a strong tower. What is a strong tower? A strong tower is an elevated tower. One of the uses for towers in the Old Testament is that they were used as fortresses in times of war and serve the people as a last retreat when the city was being overtaken by an enemy and where the people shut themselves up on occasions of popular tumult. We read from Judges 9 and 51, but there was a strong tower in the city and all the men and women, all the people of that city fled there and shut themselves in. Then they went up to the top of the tower. It is of the interest that all the people went up to the very top of the tower because it was, as we have explained, high and inaccessible for them to be captured. Such a tower is truly a strong place. The Bible informs us in Psalms 18 and 2 that the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Over and over again, Psalms compares God to a high and strong tower of protection and a shelter where his people can safely hide. Psalm 27 and 5 reads, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. The Lord's name is a strong tower because the infinite heights and depths of his person, presence and power are apprehended in that name. The name of the Lord can also be understood as his nature representing itself. One aspect of the nature is a strong high tower offering a citadel of safety capable of holding off every hostile attack. Psalm 61 verses 2 and 3 says, From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. The name of the Lord is a strong tower because it is capable of safeguarding all who call upon that name. When the prophet Joel foresaw the Lord's return, he saw a terrifying of day of judgment and error. Yet he declared, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You can find that in Joel chapter 2 verse 32. This is so good I can go on and on talking about the name of the Lord. You see, the name is above all names. That name causes demons to flee. At that name, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Please excuse me for saying this and with all due respect to the names mentioned because I do not discredit their work or authenticity. But while the world is relying on names like Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca, I will remember the words of King David in Psalms 20 and 7. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. And for those who may not know the names mentioned above, they are pharmaceutical companies. One of my favorite scriptures is found in Jeremiah 33 and 3. Yes, I have a few favorites. The whole Bible should be our favorites, but this is certainly one that I can recognize. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things uh, which thou knowest not. 
Yes, people of God, call the name of Jesus, uh, for he is our healer, our provider, our protector. He is our deliverer. I will share with you with this before I close. I was up rather early this morning typing this message because I originally was coming from the books of Acts, chapter 12, verses 1 through 7, where Peter was in prison and bound by chains and was freed, freed by the angel of the Lord. And yes, I had the subject all in place. I was going to say chain breaker. But I pondered and I pondered over that thing and I couldn't get that thing to come together for naught because the Lord said not so. You see, we have heard and was told that there is power in the name of Jesus uh, to break every chain. But how can the chains be broken if we're not calling on the name? We're not calling on that wonderful name that we know can destroy every chain, uh, that can break the chains of bondage. So God told me to go a different way this morning. See, he wants people to know that there is no name greater, no name above the name of Jesus, no name by which we may be saved, no name causes demons to flee. Nothing can stand up against the name of Jesus, no COVID, no cancer, no sickness, no disease, no poverty can stand up against that name of Jesus. I sat in my truck on yesterday as I was coming from work. And I sat in the yard. I know actually I was driving and the Lord touched me in such a way and said, the people are not calling on the name of Jesus. See, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We said we call the name, but we're not calling on that name. We're not fervently calling on the name. We've gotten so passive with saying Jesus, Jesus fix it. And I've been guilty of it. Something go wrong, Lord Jesus, oh Jesus. But I'm talking about calling on the name of Jesus with every inch, every fiber of your soul. That gut pulling up, calling on the name of Jesus, travailing, tarrying, waiting for something to happen, calling on that name. And I sat in that truck, saints to God, and I'm telling you, God had a hold on me yesterday when he said, my people need to call on the name of Jesus. We're not calling on his name. We have not called on the name of Jesus. We have trusted in everything else. We have put our trust in everything else, but we have not called on that name of Jesus like we ought to be calling on it. See, we have watered down the name of Jesus. The world has watered down the name of Jesus. They have mocked, they have ridiculed that name of Jesus. They have called the name of Jesus to be of none effect, but we know, we know at the name of Jesus, at the name of Jesus, every tongue should confess, every knee shall bow. So we don't follow after the world. We lift up the name of Jesus. We magnify the wonderful name of Jesus. The psalmist says when we call on that name, something happens. Let me tell you what happens. Healing happens when we call on the name. Deliverance happens when we call on the name. Captives are set free when we call on the names. Chains are broken when we call on that name of Jesus. Calling on the name of Jesus puts us in a place, puts us in a space where we can run to it. The name of the Lord alone is a strong tower. The righteous run to it. The righteous run to it and they are safe. Calling on the name of Jesus. Ha, oh God, oh God, oh God. Calling on the name of Jesus from our soul. The travailing, tarrying, waiting in anticipation until something happens. Ha, oh my God, my God, my God. Let me leave you with this to ponder over. The Lord name signifies everything that God is in himself. His compassion, loving kindness, mercy, grace, power, judgment, holiness, perfection, knowledge, and so much more. The fact that his name alone is a strong tower tells us that all we need to do is run to him in times of trouble. But that's the key. The scripture says, the righteous run into it and are safe. How many are running into it to find that safety? See, we can't sit and do nothing. Pastor has said, 
keep jumping, keep jumping. She says, keep trusting. Keep trusting, keep praying, keep running. Don't give up, don't throw in the towel. Keep calling on the name of Jesus. The word says the righteous run into it and are safer. We gotta keep running saints. We gotta keep running into it so we can find our safety. How do we run into the name of Jesus? We continue to call on the name. We continue to lift up the name. We continue to magnify the wonderful name. I got out of my truck and I walked through my house. I fell, no, the spirit laid me prostrate on my floor and I called and I cried and I called on that name till I couldn't find myself no more because I surrendered to that name and I got up and I walked to my living room and I declared to the Lord I said forgive me father forgive me forgive me for not making your name great in my home when I should have forgive me for not walking through every room of my house calling on the name of Jesus lifting up that wonderful name of Jesus see we said we do it and yes, we do call on the name and we pray and we seek him. Don't get me wrong. But yesterday, I'm telling you, saints of God, if I wasn't calling on that name, I was calling on that name because I need God. I need him to move. I need him to move. I need God to do some things concerning his people, not just me and my household, not just me and my kids, but concerning his people. We've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been seeking, we've been serving, we've been traveling, we've been laying prostrate before the Lord, and I've been asking God, what is it? What are we doing, oh God? Just call on the name. Call on the name of Jesus. Make his son name great. He has given him that name. He has exalted that name above the heavens and the earth. There is no, absolutely no name, saints of God, by which we may be saved. I even told the Lord Jesus, and I'm just sharing this with you all because I'm telling you the power of God, the power of the name of Jesus. The world may ridicule it, but I'm telling you there is power in that name. Let's not take that name lightly. Let's not take that name for granted. See, even from my youth, I was not raised in the church, but I remember my grandmother saying, don't take the Lord's name in vain. And we have done it so passively. But I'm telling you, people of God, that name has power. That name has power if we continue to call upon the name. I even told the Lord yesterday, DJ was running behind me, wanted to cry, come behind me. And Tosh was trying to hold him because she knew I was having an encounter with the Lord. But I got up and I went in there and I grabbed that baby and I walked through my living room with him and I said, Jesus, Jesus, the Lord says, suffer not the little children. I yet about see, I not don't go set up about my kid. So I said, God, if you give it to me, I'm gonna put it in his ear. I'm gonna put Jesus in his ear. Don't get me wrong, saints of God. I know education is important, but we teach our children everything from A, B, C to one, two, three. But we fail to teach them on how to call on the name of Jesus. Schools have been closed. So the one, two, threes and the ABCs is really not doing them too much good. But when we teach them to call on the name of Jesus in their time of need, in their time of suffering, even the ones that's doing school by virtual learning, if we teach them to call on the name of Jesus, he will give them the wisdom, the knowledge and the ability to be able to sit still and pay attention to what the teacher is saying. But we failed them in some kind of way because we've given them tablets, we've given them gadgets and everything else to put before them to keep them quiet. But what about putting the word of God before them? What about putting a Bible in their hand and said, this is the word Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, and it has all power to do whatever you need it to do. So saints of God, I'm telling you this morning, I'm telling you this morning, if we don't call on any other name, if we forget everything, if we forget everything that I've said this morning, do not let it go where you do not call on the name of Jesus. When you're going through, I'm telling you, if you call on that name, he is able to perform. If you call on that name, something happens when we call on that name. 
if you in pain, my mother has told me time and time again, when she going through pain, when she used to get into the house of the Lord, when she started calling on the name of Jesus, the pain may still be there. But I'm telling you, when you start praising and blessing the name of Jesus, that pain you don't feel because your mind is stayed on him. He said, those who minds are stayed on me, I will keep them in perfect peace. So when you're going through, when anxiety set in, when depression set in, when those suicidal thoughts, you know the enemy when he gets into our ear and he tried to say those things, those imaginations, those thoughts that try to lift itself, that try to exalt his name above the name that is above our name. Call on the name Jesus. Call on that name and see won't you bring those thoughts into captivity, bringing them unto subjection under the wonderful name of Jesus. There is absolutely no name like the name Jesus. I can go on and on and on. I can go on and on and on calling on that wonderful name of Jesus. I'm telling you, saints of God, it is in my belly. It is flowing like those rivers of living water. If I don't say another word, if I don't read another scripture, I'm going to walk through my house. I'm going to declare it on my job that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord and he is King of Kings and not no other name by which we may be saved and delivered from all of our infirmities, from everything that the enemy tries to throw our way. We know we have a name. We can lift that name up. Let's make Jesus' name that strong tower. It's an elevated name. It's a high name. It's above all every name. So when we lift that name up, we make that name great. We make that name great and greatly to be praised. We magnify the name of Jesus at agape. We lift him up at agape. We're not ashamed to call on the name of Jesus at agape. We magnify the wonderful name of Jesus at agape. We trust in the name of Jesus at agape because we know that he's a miracle worker. He's a wonder in our soul. We know that when we call on the name of Jesus, and it has happened in times past, and it will continue to happen, when we continue to call on the name of Jesus, things happen. Things change. People change. But most of all, we change. We change. So we just honor that name. We bless that wonderful name of Jesus. I don't have anything else for you, saints of God. Keep trusting. Keep running. Keep pursuing. Keep jumping. Keep listening to the words of our leader. I'm sorry, Facebook. I'm sorry, Zoom. But I have one other thing to say. When I was thinking about that card on the name of Jesus, Pastor says something in the beginning, and I'm going back because sometimes we have to bring back those words. We have to keep reiterating because it needs to get down into our, our minds. You know, it needs to soak in. She said in 2020, I'm sorry, 2020 was the year of the open mouth. So we was told to open our mouth. We praise God. We pray to God. We trusted him. We lifted up and we magnify the name of Jesus. And we kept calling on him. We kept praising and kept seeking. So the enemy crept in and he tried to cause us to not open our mouths. So we had to cover our mouths with our mask. But I'm telling you, when she said, keep jumping, I thought about when somebody actually jumps off of a, when they do the bungee jumping and they're on that high cliff. And when they start to jump off of that high cliff, when they jump, they don't jump in silence. They open their mouth and they scream. So as you jumping, like our pastor says, just keep jumping, just keep jumping. But as you're jumping, saints of God, don't forget to open your mouth. Don't forget to open your mouth and call on the name of Jesus. That's all I have for you, Agape. That's all I have for Facebook, Zoom. Keep trusting in God. I love each and every one of you. I'm going to turn this back over to our anointed, our blessed pastor. It's back in your hands, Pastor Rose. God bless you. Amen, 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 and amen. Something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. Why? Because the name of Jesus is a strong name. It's a strong name tower. Hallelujah. She said that it was an elevated fortress, but you have to make the choice 
to run into that elevated fortress. How do you run into that elevated fortress? By opening your mouth and calling on Jesus, not sarcastically, not Jesus fix it. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. But when you go down and you start calling Jesus, hallelujah, through all the hurt, through all the pain, through all the suicidal thoughts, through all the people turning your back on it, and you yet call on the name of Jesus. What are you doing? You are transcending out of the present into the spiritual atmosphere. And, and she she made that transition as she laid prostrate on her floor on yesterday and stopped calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I tell you, if you call him one time, you got to call him again. Glory to God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So instead of you cussing, glory to God, instead of you fussing, instead of you arguing, start calling on Jesus. Recognize some things you can not fixed, but I know who I can call. I know I can call on the strong name, Jesus, and I can run into the elevated fortress. Why? Because there's safety there. There's safety in the Lord. There's safety in Jesus. There's deliverance in Jesus. There's salvation in Jesus. There's healing in Jesus. When that pain hit, instead of you looking for the next Percocet, start calling Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you can take the Percocet and the pain still be there. Hallelujah. But I dare you, I dare you, I dare you, I dare you to call on Jesus. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our doctor. Jesus, our lawyer. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. You got to get that name down on the inside of you. So when something comes up, instead of a curse word coming out, glory to God. They say, well, pastor, we are saints. Yes, yes, yes. But I know we got some cussing saints. Come on now, let's be real, let's be real, let's be real. Why? Because they have not been totally delivered. Have not been totally delivered, glory to God. But when you get Jesus down on the inside of you, the cussing go away because the cussing in Jesus cannot exist. So when you get upset, instead of you going off the deep end, you start calling Jesus, the strong name. Thank God for the word of God coming through. Evangelist Randall on today, Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. You're looking for safety. You're looking for answers. You're looking for healing. You're looking for peace in your mind. You're tormented day and night. You can't sleep at night. Hallelujah. Your anxiety level has been on 10 for it seems like forever. Glory to God. But I dare you to call on the name of the Lord and the righteous run into it and are safe. Call on the name of the Lord. And if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you can do so right now by calling on the name of the Lord. All you have to do is confess and repent of your sin and recognize that, Lord, I accept you as my personal savior. Forgive me for my sins. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. And I want to be delivered. Hallelujah. Those of you who you, you are slowly making a change, but you're not fully there. You need to ask, God, Lord, I want to be whole. I want to be delivered. I want to be set free. That young woman, that young man now that is contemplating suicide, I speak to your spirit now. I speak peace in your mind. Peace in your soul. In the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Healing for the mind. We pull down every stronghold now that is in your life, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for every widow now. We pray for every widow, God, that feels that there's no one left. Hallelujah. The loneliness, Lord, that you would touch, God, that you would comfort, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let that widow know, God. Let that widower know, God that they are not by themselves. 
Hallelujah. You said that you will be that husband man. And Father, we want to tell you now, thank you. We will call on your name of Jesus. Forgive us, God. Forgive us for not calling on your name. Forgive us for using your name in vain. Forgive us for using your name in vain, hallelujah, and not meaning it when we say your name. God, we want to tell you thank you now. We thank you for your name because we know that you are our strong tower. You are our deliverer, hallelujah. You are our healer. And thank you, Jesus. You are our, our warrior, glory to God. And we bless your wonderful name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you, saints of God. We thank you for joining us on today. We'll continue to pray for your strength. And if you have enjoyed the service on today, <clears throat> if something has been said that has blessed you, we ask that you will give your offering, amen, to be a blessing to this ministry so that we can continue on. The minute softwares, because we will continue to stay virtual even when we go back physically into the building, but there's many softwares that we must buy and many things that we must buy so that we can continue to improve our live feed and also our Zoom feed. So I'm asking you to be a blessing to the deliverance, to the Agape Deliverance Church of God in Christ. You can give via cash app, dollar sign Agape Kojic 2020. And I believe that it is scrolling on the Facebook screen. Or you can give through Give by Agape Deliverance, Church of God in Christ. I want to thank those members, thank those friends that have already given. Every offering is prayed over. When we get notification, amen, via email that you have given to the ministry, we take time to pray for you. Agape, if this is your tithing period, hallelujah, give of your tithes and your offers. Don't put it off that I'm going to do it later because Satan himself will come along and steal it from you, mm -hmm. make you forget. Hallelujah. So if you have, have not given your tithes and your offering for today, please do so. Amen. Please do so. And we're praying God's richest blessings be upon you. Let me pray for you now, those who are giving, those who are giving, those who have already give, given. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you will bless those who have given of their offering. We pray, God, that you will bless the tithers, that you, God, you said in your word, hallelujah, that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that there should not be room enough to receive. And Father, those who have given of their tithes, we pray financial increase into their homes. Those who have given of their offerings, who have given out of their need, God, that you would be a financial blessing. Meet the financial need of your, of your people, God. Meet the financial need of those who have given, God, that there will not be any lack in their home. There will not be any lack in their home, even in a pandemic, God, that there will not be any lack. Hallelujah. Every bill will be paid. Every bill will be paid. In the name of you, God, we want to thank you now, God, for, the, for debt cancellation. We thank you for debt cancellation. We thank you, God, for zero balances now. God, we thank you now. We thank you for doing it for your people, God, through the giving, through the blessing of the ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. We thank you for joining us. We look forward to you joining us on Wednesday morning, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 6 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. for our morning prayer. And again on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for prayer and Bible study. God bless you. I love you, Agape. I love you, friends. Amen. We, I love you, family. Let's go forward and keep calling on that strong name. Keep calling on the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and call on Jesus. Be blessed. Have a blessed day. Bye.